Mike, I want to switch gears a little bit. Um, we heard uh, yesterday from um, uh, Aaron McPherson at Maker Studios, Robert Kinsel at, uh, at YouTube. So we got a, kind of a, a great uh, 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 and fascinating sketch of the, uh, the video ecosystem from the standpoint of companies that are, in effect, building it from the bottom up. Sure. You're in a different a different situation. Um, you're in a company that was uh, that was launched by a, series, uh, a set of uh, very well established television networks, and and fairly early on you went into original programming, but with major production partners. I'm wondering what the video ecosystem broadly looks like from the perspective of Hulu. Sure. Well, definitely there's been this lowering of the of the. Um of the bar to be able to get into producing content. I mean, technology, YouTube, it's all uh, the, reduced the barrier of entry. And, you know, I, someone talked about the de democratization of, of content. Uh, that seems to be the new term. And I think it's true. It's not just true for being able to take a, you know, a video with your iPhone and uploading it to YouTube, and that's content. It's happening broadly in sort of the more premium area as well. And if you think about the number of networks or streaming services like us that are making content, premium content today, um, it's staggering. You know, I think it's the heyday of TV, really. I yeah. mean, you, you really can't think of another time where there was more quality, better shows, better, you know, uh, Jeff's talking about the you know, movie stars are making TV yeah. shows and they're, they're seeking it out. It's an incredible time to be a consumer of this content. Um, now, interestingly, that lowering of the bar doesn't necessarily mean that it's cheaper to make. Right. I mean, now all of a sudden you've got a lot of people going after the same talent. You know, we all know what happens when that when that happens. So, you know, your sort of wholesale price goes up. But I think you know you've got an opportunity to to really get big names and big celebrities and stars into these kinds of shows. And we're we're going to do the same thing. You know, we have a show that we're doing with J.J. Abrams around mm -hmm. a Stephen King novel. Um, was hoping to have a casting announcement today, but I don't. Uh, but uh, so we're doing a show with Jason Reitman to, uh, called Casual, and we casted uh, that last week. We're um, you know, what we are doing is trying to figure out how do we play in the, um, I, you know, if you want to call it the MCN environment as well. Mm -hmm. So we did a deal with Freddie Wong at Rocket Jump and going to do a, a, a higher, a little bit more of a premium show around his very successful YouTube channel, sort of a behind the scenes comedy there. So what, we're going to try that. What's yeah. the value proposition for a Freddie Wong who mm -hmm. already has his, uh, his thing on YouTube? Sure. So how do you go in to, uh, to say, you know, a YouTube creator uh, or uh, uh, an individual creator or an, an MCN that may be a little mm -hmm. bit more of a, a production company and say, hey, We've got a value proposition for you that's even better than what you've got, or you, that, or that you can wear really well on top of what you're doing. What's sure. the, what's the who? Well, I think there's two things. One, you know, we're going to pay them, right? Which always, you always start there. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it gives them an opportunity to do something different. You know, our model isn't is we have a free streaming business as well as the subscription business, but that gives us economics. You know, our ad business is robust. You know, we, we have um, an ability to monetize content in a different way than you can in some of the YouTube models. And so we're also giving people a bigger canvas to paint on, where we're saying, look, make it a premium experience for us because it's going to be hard for us necessarily to put, you know, a YouTube um, channel piece of content, depending on the content, alongside, you know, Blacklist and Gotham and, and more of the premium content. So give, give these guys an opportunity to step up a little bit in terms of quality and then create, and they, they love that idea. Now, from our standpoint, we'll hope that they will use their um, celebrity, their channels, to promote back to their show on Hulu mm -hmm. and create a symbiotic relationship there. Yeah, it's interesting, because I mean, the analogy that I want to use, but it's not, a, it's not the right one, is you're kind of using, YouTube is the farm team, and you're coming in and saying, well, you know, we're the big leagues, but in this case, you're saying, Hey, player, you can still play on the farm team and the big leagues at the same time, and the major league at the same time. So it's a it's a it's a completely different model than what we're accustomed to. Sure, you know, and it's not the same show, right? We're going after a, a different type of show with with these guys, and we'll we'll look at different models there too. Um, but yeah, I think that's a 
not, not, you know, I wouldn't ever want to say that YouTube's the, the farm link. They've got, you know, a, whatever, I don't know what the last it's, stat is. I mean, they're pretty, they're... It's uh, a big, big, it's big, a big business, big, so... Big um, team. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what trends are you seeing in uh, our original uh, digital video content? Uh, and what, what are you kind of speculating? Uh, and I'll give you an example. Uh, during the New Fronts last year, so last spring, one of the things that just hit me like a brick was I, I'd say fully a half of the, of the presenters during that two-week period um, were focused on uh, uh, high demographic uh, uh, service um, uh, uh, shows. I mean, produced programs in uh, travel, lifestyle, fashion, uh, and food. So Hulu is different in this case, but they were all traveling in that territory and, and big names and newcomers alike. And the only th my conclusion from it, which I remember I wrote up at the time, was that um, they seem to be s hypothesizing that basic cable is abandoning uh, upper income demographics and going downscale. And so they see an upscale territory to inhabit. So. That's what I saw last year. What are you seeing from the, uh, the produced uh, uh, content side of the ledger uh, over the next year, two years? Sure, for, for, for us, I mean, we're, we're focused on, a, a, on being broad, right? Um, we we want to grow and drive a very big, robust subscription business, and to do that, we think we have to have content that's really good in several different categories for different types of, of viewers without being all things to, you can't be all things to all people, but so we'll, we'll invest in that premium, uh, higher-end drama, you know, like the J.J. Abrams project I mentioned, we'll be focusing on sort of edgy single-camera comedies. We're going to do reality. We're going to do animation. Um, we're really proud of a show that really targets um, millennial uh, uh, English-speaking Latinos called East Los High that does really, really well for us. So we're going to play in a lot of different fields here to try and drive, you know, segments of our subscriber base. So for us, it's about premium content. We want to be the place where you can come and get the best shows on TV, whether it's shows we've acquired, whether it's shows we've made. And, and so we have a pretty high quality bar for the things that we're going we're gonna to invest you know, our, our, our And are, are you seeing uh, uh, others traveling in the same territory? I mean, do you see yourselves pulling away from a pack, or do you see the, the pack that you're part of growing larger and more competitive? What's, what, what's, what's the landscape look like? Well, it's definitely more competitive. Uh, you know, I think... And your comment about cable is, is interesting because you know every you know in the history of cable everybody starts out niche and then goes broad mm -hmm. and in some cases that the quality comes down when you do that. Um, you know there's been a few situations where that hasn't happened. You look at FX. Right. right. FX, you know, is still um, a very premium uh, show. You know, place where you can get great premium, edgy, fantastic shows. And they've not said, okay, we're going to go and do the broad. Right. Be the big. You know. 18 to 49 uh, blowout type of show, and, and they end up with they end up with them because they don't try to do that. Right. Um, and so I think that for us, we'll we're going to do a lot of those kinds of things, but I think for us, it'll be premium. Mm -hmm.